Morning, Professor. Thank you so much for your time. This sounds like such exciting news. Very hopeful, according to the researchers. How hopeful are you on hearing the news? Well, it's very good news. I mean, there are many more steps to go through in the clinical development, but this is one of the first things that you look for when you get into larger numbers of, of uh, participants in trials, and that is, uh, is the vaccine safe? And we've heard that it's safe. But importantly at this stage, does it produce the kind of immune response that can potentially uh, prevent uh, a coronavirus infection? Right, so my understanding is that there are two things that are hopeful, and it is the antibodies, which is a form of protein, and the T cells, which, and you will absolutely correct me because I'm sure I'm going to go wrong here, but my understanding is that the T cells are the white blood cells that actually help organize the body's immune system and help target um, the bad cells that are causing problems. That's completely right. I mean, these are two of the most important things that you want to stimulate with a vaccine. And many of the vaccines we have in existence today that are successful uh, stimulate both antibodies and T cells. So this is very good news that you've got both sides of the immune system responding in this manner. Um, and what both of them will do is create a memory so that uh, your immune system is primed. And if in the future you came into contact uh, with the COVID-19 virus, that immune system would immediately kick into action with both parts of this immune system working to, to prevent infection. So it's good news, but what we don't know is whether what we're seeing in the immune system in the trial will actually mean that this is going to be clin clinically effective and really protect people. And how do we find that out? Does it just mean a larger test, a longer test? Exactly. And uh, this is already in motion. In the UK, uh, they're moving towards 10,000 people in the trial. In South Africa, we're hoping to enroll 2,000 people. In Brazil, 3,000 people. And possibly in the United States, um, a much larger study with up to 30,000 people. So we're looking now at thousands of people to be enrolled around the world to see whether the, the vaccine actually clinically protects you uh, against infection. And it's so exciting that uh, Wits University is in involved as well. It's one of the countries that is involved using the very same vaccine. I know um, from listening uh, to you before that we need to reach the magical number of 42 people infected before you can open up the results and see what's working. How far is the VIT study progressing? Is it too early to say whether we've got similar positive results? Yes, it's far too early to say because, you know, as you know, the, um, this was started just a few weeks ago. Um, as of last week, about 250 people of the 2,000 people had been enrolled. Uh, so it's far too early to say. And it, researchers are always very, very careful. One of the sort of rules of doing this kind of research is that you never look at your data too early. If you do that, you spoil your whole research. So you have to be patient and get to those endpoints, numbers, that will allow you to unblind the data and then see whether or not you're getting the, the sort of results that you want to see. And here we're going to also be looking at the immune response. Now, my understanding is that when it comes to trials like this, obviously it's the Oxford University is running it, but it's in conjunction with AstraZeneca, the pharmaceutical group. And my understanding is that the South African government has also put money into this WITS trial. Does that give us some sort of priority when it comes to potentially uh, getting batches of this effective vaccine once it's produced? Well, I think as uh, South, um, I'll put two hats on here, but uh, as South African researchers, I think that we would certainly argue that it should, uh, because if your country's citizens are willing to participate in a scientific experiment, then they should also be uh, first in line to get the benefits. But I think beyond this, there's a big global debate that's critically important, which is about you know who does get. Uh, the first of a successful vaccine. How are we going to divide that up uh, in, the, in the world? Because we've already seen that the richer Northern Hemisphere countries are already saying, well, we'll take hundreds of millions of doses. And what does that mean for the rest of the world, both of the very poor countries, but also countries that don't manufacture the vaccines? What, what right to vaccine? So there's a lot of activity going on globally to try and argue for equitable access mm. to an effect vaccine should we get one. And, and that's the issue of what's being called vaccine nationalism. We know that the United Kingdom has already ordered 100 million doses of this vaccine. 
Should South Africa be doing the same right now? And as you are chairperson of the SA Health Products Regulatory Authority, is that the sort of thing that you have to decide on now? Well, the, the regulatory authority doesn't decide on things like purchasing or, of, of vaccines. That's very much the Department of Health, the minister. That, that's where that uh, would, would come from. The regulatory authority will decide whether the evidence from the clinical trials is robust enough to show that this is indeed a safe and effective vaccine and it's suitable for our population. So they're very independent and they have a regulatory function. But you're quite right that, uh, in fact, uh, Minister Mkhize and the President uh, through the African Union are both quite actively involved in discussions around access. And there's a, a new global initiative called the COVAX facility, which has invited countries who will both purchase their own vaccines or who have who are poorer countries and donors purchase their vaccines to put in an advance order for effective vaccines for 20% of their population. And so far, uh, 165 countries worldwide have indicated they'd like to do this. And the exciting thing about this is that if we can get enough countries with enough buying power it becomes a very, very strong economic argument to big companies who, are many, who will likely manufacture vaccines in the future to actually cooperate. And, and it's one way to get mm. equitable access throughout the world. It's such a crucial issue. When it comes to you making recommendations, as you say, that is your role, how soon will you decide? Because surely it's also an issue of who puts in their orders first until we get this joint bargaining position. Well, from the regulatory authority point of view, it's for what's called an applicant to apply. So they, so once we get, I mean, touch wood, that we're going to get uh, <laughs> successful uh, results um, for this vaccine and for, there are many other vaccines now in clinical development. So we're hoping to get more than just one vaccine uh, coming through. Um, once the data is available, then the people will apply, an applicant will apply to the regulatory authority who will then review the, the clinical data, the, what we call the preclinical data, the laboratory data, and if there's data in, in animal studies as well, and we'll look at the manufacturing of the vaccine. Um, but obviously we'll do this as a matter of urgency. SAPRA has, has prioritized all COVID research and will prioritize the registration of products for, for COVID treatment or prevention um, as a high priority. So this will be done as a real matter of urgency, um, but it will depend on having the data presented to the regulatory authority. Well, thank you very much uh, for giving us your insights into what looks like a fantastic breakthrough in uh, the search for a vaccine. Very hopeful early signs. Thank you. Professor Helen Reach is executive director of the WITS um, Health Product Authority. Um, she's executive director of the Vitz Reproductive Health and HIV Institute. She's also chairperson of the SA Health Products Regulatory Authority.